Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a drama, fantasy film from 2018, titled Be With You. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Between heaven and earth there's a place called Cloudland where people stay until they're forgotten before going to heaven. Mommy Penguin peeped down on earth every day, crying, until one year later, she secretly hopped on the raindrop train and returned to earth to visit her son. They hugged and played together, but when the rainy season was over, she had to catch the last raindrop or she wouldn't go back to Cloudland. Mother Penguin said goodbye to her son and went back, but now she wouldn't cry anymore while watching the little penguin's life on Earth. This is story is being read by Yung Ji Ho from a book his now deceased mother, Im Su Ah, made for him. He's hiding from her funeral but he's still over here some relatives say that it was the pregnancy that made her weak. Ji Ho looks at his mother's picture and tells her he'll see her again. A year later, Yung Woo Jin is trying his best at being a single dad, although the house is a mess and he isn't exactly a great cook. He wakes up early to go to the pool he works at and clean the entire place before returning home to make breakfast and help his kid get ready for school, finding him sleeping inside his mom's wardrobe. Every morning Woojin also takes his medicine, and Jiho watches the forecast, eagerly waiting for the rainy season to begin. Woojin takes Jiho to school on his bicycle, although he can't ride too fast. Then he goes to work, where his co-worker always keeps an eye on him and brings him coffee, which makes their boss swimming instructor Choi jealous. After school is over, Jiho goes to stay at the bakery belonging to Hong Gu, Wu Jin's best friend who is like an uncle to him. Today, Jiho arrives in a bad mood because his dad can't run and the school has a special event coming where students must team up with their dads for a relay race. Hong Gu solves this quickly by telling him he'll be the one racing instead, which Wu Jin thanks him for when he comes by to pick up Jiho after he's done with work. The day of the race, when Wu Jin is about to leave the pool, Choi stops him and asks him to change some light bulbs. Meanwhile, at school, Jiho is told he can't race because Hong Gu isn't his father, but when Jiho is about to return their t-shirts, Wu Jin shows up and tells him he'll race with him, thinking he'll be fine if he just jogs. Jiho does well in his half of the race, but when he passes the baton to his dad, he looks sad because he knows they won't win, so Wu Jin runs seriously instead of jogging. He is actually doing well too, but only at first, when he's about to reach the finish line, he passes out. Later, after he starts feeling better and the two of them go home, Jiho makes Wu Jin promise that he'll never leave him. He also wants to hang some blankets outside because according to Hong Gu, that will make it rain. The next morning, they wake up to discover it is raining, so Jiho rushes out to the train station. Wu Jin follows him there but of course there's nobody to be found, so he picks up Jiho and tries to take him home regardless of his protests. When they're about to cross the tunnel however, they see a silhouette in the shadows. Wu Jin wants to be cautious, but Jiho isn't afraid and runs toward the person, who indeed turns out to be Su Ah. Jiho is happy to see her. But Wu Jin is scared, thinking she may be a ghost, in reality, she's indeed here, but she's suffering from amnesia and doesn't remember them. They take her back home, where Jiho shows her a picture of the family to prove her identity and a welcome drawing he made for her. This makes Wu Jin nervous so he takes Jiho to the bathroom for a second so they can talk in private. He thinks they shouldn't tell Su Ah that she had been dead because it could be too traumatic, it shouldn't be difficult to lie since they haven't thrown away any of her things. But when they come out, Su Ah starts making lots of questions, she doesn't understand why she's being welcome if she lives here and how she could have let the house become so dirty and messy. Wu Jin and Jiho come up with a lie on the spot, they tell her she had been in the hospital for a while, and she was released yesterday. Today they went out for a walk and while playing hide and seek, she got hit by a rock, which caused her to pass out in the tunnel and lose her memory. The following morning, breakfast goes easier thanks to Su Ah being there to help. Wu Jin drops Jiho at school, but as soon as he leaves, Jiho runs back to his house so he can spend the day with his mother. Sua is going through her things and finds a key together with her wedding ring, and hides it all when Jiho shows up, telling her his teacher was absent. The two of them spend the day playing a variety of games, and Jiho is surprised to see his mom's strength, she's much healthier now. At dinner, Jiho refuses to eat because he wants his mom's cooking, not his dad's. Wu Jin thinks she should rest, but Sua decides to try anyway, sadly, she's very out of practice and she can't get the sauce right. When food she's frying in very hot oil starts popping off the pan, Wu Jin puts himself between her and the stove so he gets burned instead. After putting Jiho to bed, Su Ah takes a shower, and Wu Jin uses the chance to take his medicine without her knowing. Afterward, Su Ah offers to put some cream on the burn marks on Wu Jin's back and asks him to tell her the story of their relationship while doing so. The two of them met in high school, sharing a class. Su Ah was the top student, but Wu Jin was more concentrated on the swimming club, so he spent most of his classes sleeping. One day, during swimming class, he finally got to meet her properly when he saved her from drowning and he developed a crush on her that day. Hongu could tell his friend like Su Ah, so he gave Wu Jin some tips on how to get the girl. He tried to start a conversation by asking her for a pen, but she cut him short before he could even finish his sentence. Later, during dancing class, their teacher noticed Wu Jin was a bad dancer, so he paired him up with Su Ah, who was also pretty bad. 
Wu Jin was so distracted by their closeness that he accidentally stepped on her foot, and when he bent over to clean it, he ended up headbutting her nose. Su Ah ended up bleeding and leaving the gym in a bad mood. They didn't talk again until the last day of school, when Su Ah asked Tong Gu to sign her yearbook, and since Wu Jin was there with him, she told him he can sign as well if he wanted. Wu Jin did sign, and when Su Ah took her yearbook back, she accidentally took his pen with her, which Wu Jin shows her in the present. Afterward, Wu Jin went to a nearby college for swimming, and Su Ah moved to Seoul to assist university there. Wu Jin tried to call her during their first summer break, but every time she picked up the phone, he would get too nervous and hung up. After that, he was called by the army, so for another two years he couldn't contact her. When he came back, he tried calling her again, and this time, Hong Gu made it impossible for him to hang up. Instead of asking her properly on a date though, Wu Jin told her he needed to have his pen back, so they agreed to meet in front of their old school. When they finally saw each other again, they behaved very awkwardly around each other, and Su Ah gave Wu Jin the pen before taking off. Seeing her leave was the final incentive Wu Jin needed to ask her out, and they ended up going for dinner. Their conversation was very awkward there too, but eventually they find a topic in common and in the evening continued smoothly. Afterward, they waited for their buses together, but neither of them wanted to leave yet, so they waited in each other's company until the last one passed by and Sua had no other choice but to leave, reminding Wu Jin that she wouldn't be back until winter break. After a moment however, Wu Jin ran after her bus, got inside and asked her if he could write her letters while she was back in Seoul, which she accepted. Back in the present, it's getting late, so they go to bed and Wu Jin promises to finish the story another day. The next morning, at school, Ji Ho hears a classmate say it rains every time his dad washes the car. Meanwhile, Su Ah decides to explore the shack she finds in the garden. After opening it with the key she had found when she arrived, she enters the shack and finds out this is the place where she would make all her crafts. After work, Wu Jin goes to see Hong Gu, who has called him over saying it was urgent. When he arrives there D, he notices he is trying to set him up on a blind date. Wu Jin tries to sneak away, but Hong Gu catches him and guesses he's already seeing someone, even going as far as saying Wu Jin shouldn't make up a bad excuse as saying Su Ah is back. This is too accurate and scary, so Wu Jin runs away. Later that night, Hong Gu suddenly shows up dressed as a penguin to surprise Ji Ho, so Wu Jin tries to kick him out before Su Ah sees him. But Hong Gu sneaks inside by using another door, and ends up seeing Su Ah. Thinking she's a ghost, he runs away as he promises he'll never set up Wu Jin on blind dates again. Afterward, Su Ah asks Wu Jin for the rest of the story behind their relationship. Wu Jin did write to her, and the next time they saw each other, they went to the movies. He tried to hold her hand but grabbed a guy's foot by mistake, so later when they were waiting for the bus, Su Ah got a little daring and put her hand in Wu Jin's jacket pocket. Wu Jin quickly followed suit and held her hand inside his pocket. Back in the present, the couple repeats the same act while Ji Ho talks in his sleep. Sometime later, Wu Jin takes Su Ah to the top of a hill, where they have a picnic, listen to the radio and watch a movie from a nearby drive-in theater by using a pair of binoculars they take their turn with. She gets so engrossed with the movie that Wu Jin takes the chance to surprise her with his lips on hers, and the couple finally kisses in the rain. Days pass, and Su Ah gets used to her routine. She plays with Ji Ho, keeps the house clean, and cooks for her family. She finds the penguin book as well, but she doesn't think much of it, and when he sees Ji Ho collecting four leaf clovers to wish for more rain, she adds some of her own without telling him, but he and Wu Jin do notice. One day, the family goes out for an afternoon of fun at the river, and Wu Jin carries them both when they return home. He manages to arrive at the house, but as soon as he steps in, he passes out. He wakes up moments later on his bed with Su Ah next to him, demanding an explanation. Wu Jin decides to tell her by going back to their story. It all started after their third date, during which Su Ah gifted him a clover charm to wish him good luck on the national tryouts. He trained extra hard not to disappoint her, but one day during practice, he passed out in the middle of the pool. The doctor said there was a problem in his brain that controlled hormones, so if he got nervous or strained himself, he kept fainting. He had to quit the swimming team and lost all hope of having a normal life, so he broke up with Su Ah without telling her about his illness. A year passed and he still couldn't get over her, so he traveled to Seoul to see her one last time, but when he arrived at her university, he saw her getting in a car with another man, so he left without talking to her after dropping the clover charm to the ground. He didn't try to contact her again after that, but months later, he received a phone call, and he couldn't take it anymore. He went to the train station and received Su Ah with a hug, listening to her say they were meant to be. Shortly afterward, he proposed to her, and she accepted while ignoring her family's disapproval of her dropping her studies to become a housewife. After the story is finally over, the couple falls asleep while cuddling. The next day, Ji Ho tells his parents that he'll be singing with the choir for the school concert and invites Su Ah to come. At school, Ji Ho practices the song with his class, where they have to share their dreams for the future. Since he's the fastest runner in his class, his dream is to be a professional that wins the Olympics. Meanwhile, Su Ah finds her old diary and learns the truth of what happened to her, but she doesn't tell the family. 
Instead, she starts teaching Jiho how to do chores, wash himself and even cook some basics, that way he can help his dad around the house. Wujin has also plans of his own, he and Honggu have been covering the train tunnel with wood, hoping that will prevent her from returning to Cloudland. Rainy season is about to end, so everyone's mood isn't the best. One day while at work, Wujin gets a call from the mother of one of Jiho's classmates. It turns out she caught Jiho washing her car, but Jiho refuses to say anything about it. Wujin apologizes for his son, getting worried when the mother says he needs therapy because obviously not having his mother is giving him emotional issues. On their way home, Jiho finally confesses he washed the car because his classmate said this would make it rain and his mother would stay longer. The next day, Wujin is devastated to find the wind has moved all the wood away from the tunnel. Meanwhile, Suwa goes to see Hong Gu to ask him for a favor that will take a long time. She returns home some hours later with a cake, and the whole family celebrates Jiho's birthday together. Later, while watching the rain with her husband, Suwa mentions she hopes Jiho grows to be as handsome as his dad before kissing and hugging Wujin while crying. The day of the concert finally comes, but Wujin is once again stuck at work, this time, Choi gets hurt by a falling lamp, and Wujin jumps in the water to save him, thinking it may have been his fault because he fixed it in a hurry last time. The concert begins and Jiho refuses to sing because his parents aren't there, and when his turn comes to say his dream like the other kids did, he stays silent. At that moment, Suwa finally enters the theater, having given up on waiting for Wujin. When Jiho sees her, he finally begins talking, mentioning he's a good runner, but also going through all the housekeeping things his mom has taught him, ending his dream by saying he'll become a good caretaker for his dad. After the concert is over, the sun comes out, and Suwa realizes she must hurry before the last raindrop disappears. She starts making her way to the station as Jiho also sees the sun at school and Wujin sees it when he wakes up in an ambulance, so both of them run towards the station as well. Jiho gets there first and hugs Suwa, asking her not to leave him and apologizing for being the reason she died, since her relatives blamed the pregnancy. Crying, Suwa tells him it isn't his fault and she wouldn't have been happier if she had lived a longer life without him. In the meantime, Wujin is having trouble making his way to the station. First, he loses his bicycle because a truck pushes him off the street, so instead, he has to run. But soon he starts feeling sick and falls to the ground, remembering a full conversation they had the evening they watched the rain together. He had apologized for not making her happy, but Suwa said he did, and that she wanted him to keep on living for the sake of Jiho. Finding strength in this memory, Wujin stands up and goes back to running, making it to the station just in time to see Suwa disappear in the tunnel with a clover in her hand. Life becomes easier for them now that Jiho is helping around the house, the lesser stress even allows Wujin to ride his bike faster and be a swimming instructor at the pool. One evening, after taking his medicine, he finds at the bottom of the bag a key and a note from Suwa telling him to go to the shack and read her diary. This is how he discovers her version of the story, which is quite different from her perspective. Suwa had already seen Wujin on the street before they met at school, and she already developed a crush on him right then. She was too nervous to talk to him though, especially after she embarrassed herself when he saw her drown. This anxiety was what caused her to be cold to him when he asked for the pen and what made her flee the dancing class, even if she danced badly on purpose to be paired up with him. Asking Hong Gu first to sign her yearbook had also been a strategy to get to talk to Wujin. She kept the pen as a memory of him and tried to call him many times while in college, but she never was brave enough. In the end, Wujin called her first, and during their first date, anxiety got bad again when she thought he only wanted the pen, but thankfully Wujin took initiative again. Then the breakup happened, but she could never forget him. That day at university, she got in the car of just a friendly classmate, but quickly got out when she noticed Wujin waiting for her. She went after him, picking up the clover charm on the way, but when she crossed the street, she got hit by a van. She then fell unconscious, and when she woke up, she found herself in the tunnel, having jumped eight years into the future. She didn't have her memory of their life together, but she got to fall in love with him all over again, and loved every minute they spent together. When she went back into the tunnel, she returned to the past and woke up at the hospital after six weeks spent in a coma. She was really scared about the future she saw, not wanting to die so young, but she knew if she chose another life she wouldn't be as happy. That was why she called him to meet again, and that day at the station, telling him they were meant to be. Ten years later, Wujin puts the diary in a box to gift Jiho on his birthday. Honggu is there as well with a cake and a card Suwa left him, which is the favor she had asked for all those years ago, she left a card for every birthday until the 20th, which is today. Jiho is going out on a date, but he promises Wujin he won't be back late so he can make dinner for his dad. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.